We're now looking at my computer screen, which I will use to demonstrate how we can create and verify a bag. To get started, I'm going to double click on the My Computer icon, which we see over here in the lower left hand corner, which gives me a Windows Explorer window. And from here I can see all the drives that are configured on my computer. I'm going to navigate to my G drive, which is the drive letter for the USB portable disk drive, which is also where, in my case, the Bagot command is installed. Alternatively, the Bagot program could have been installed on my local computer C drive, and you would then have navigated to the C drive to view your Bagot program. What I see here is my Bagot-3.9 folder, which is the installation folder for the Bagot program. I'm going to double click on this, and here we see all files and folders related to the Bagot application. Inside this folder, we see a directory called bin, which is a common short-term abbreviation for binary, which is where you can commonly look to find programs. I'm going to double-click on the bin directory, and once we come down into this folder, you see that we have a bag file and a bag.bat file, which are representing the bag at bag command. Now what I want to do is open up a DOS window to show you how we could get to this directory to run the command through the DOS command window. So to open a DOS command window, I'm going to go to my lower left hand corner and select the Start button. And from the Start menu, I'm going to select the Run option. And in the Run option, I can type in CMD, which is going to allow me to run the command, Command, and click OK, and that opens up a DOS command window for me. When the DOS command window opens, you see that it defaults to, our, to my Documents and Settings directory. So before we proceed to look at the Bagot command, what I'd like to do is just make sure that my Java runtime environment is set up correctly by looking at the Java home environment variable. The command that you issue to see your environmental variables is the set command. So I type in SCT, hit my enter key, and it lists out in alphabetical order all of the environmental variables. Here I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit to get to the appropriate area in the alphabet, but as we look here we see that the Java home variable is set and it is pointing to the g colon slash jre directory. As I mentioned, the Bagot program and the Java runtime environment are both installed on my portable disk device, so I'll see this pointing to my G drive. So now that we know that our Java runtime environment variable is set up and accessible, what we can do is change directory to go access the bag command via the DOS command window. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is change over to my G drive. So to do that, I'm going to type in a G colon and the Enter key. And you'll notice that the prompt gives you an indication of what directory and what disk you are currently looking at. So I'm now on my G drive, and from there, I want to change directory to my Bagot directory. And we can see that at the top through our Windows Explorer window. That gives us a nice little prompt. So I'm going to use the cd command, and I need to put the leading backslash in, bagot-3.9 backslash bin. Now one thing that's important is in DOS commands, you need to use the backslash rather than the forward slash. So I hit my Enter key. And you can see by the prompt that we have changed to that directory, and now I can issue the DOS dir command, and this is going to give me a listing of all of the files that are in this directory. So you see as we look at the DOS command window, we see the same listing of files that are displayed in the Windows Explorer window. So this is where we need to be to run our Bagot program. So we're now ready to run our Bagot program. So what I want to do next is go out and take a look at the files that I want to package up in my bag. And these are stored on my H drive. So in my lower left hand corner here you see I have an icon that gives me access to my H drive. And when I open up my H drive I see I have a My Projects folder, which is the, the folder that I use to store my work. I'm going to double click on the My Projects folder, and here we see that we have a governor underscore easily underscore executive underscore orders folder, which is where the folders and files are stored that I want to include in my bag. So as I drill down into the executive orders folder, I see that there is a subfolder set up for each one of the years. And as I click down in one of these, I see here that I have all the files for the executive orders for 2005. So this is the folder that we are going to be bagging up and transferring. Now that I know where my files are that I want to bag up, I want to now go out and prepare the G drive to create my bag. 
So I'm going to open up my computer icon again here and navigate out to my G drive. And what I need to do is create a folder that's going to be the holding place for my bags. So to create a folder, you can use your right mouse menu here and you see that you have a new folder option. So I'm going to select the new folder option and it gives me a prompt to enter in the name of the folder that I want to create. So I'm going to call it Bag It Bags, which is going to be the indicator of this is where I'm going to store the bags that I create. So I now have my Bag It Bags folder created and I have a place to put the bag that I'm going to create. So I'm going to just resize this window a little bit and move it so that we can see it at the same time that we're going to run the command. We are now ready to actually go out and create our bag. So I'm going to create a bag that's going to contain all of the files in the Governor Easley Executive Orders folder. A benefit of organizing my folders this way is that it simplifies my create command. So my create command is going to require the list of files or folders that I want to put in my bag. And since now I have all of my folders in a single folder, I only now need to issue that Governor Easley Executive Orders folder to the create command. So to create my bag, I'm going to enter the bag command. And to enter the bag command, we start by entering bag and we pass in the create option because we are going to create a bag at this point. And the next parameter is going to be the name of the bag that I am going to create. I'm going to create the bag out on my G drive under my bag it bags folder. And then the name of the bag is going to be my underscore easily underscore exec underscore orders underscore bag, remembering to put the underscore bag suffix on the end of my bag name to denote that this folder will be containing a bag of files. The final parameter is going to be the name of the folder that I want to put into the bag. And in this case, it's going to be the on the H drive, which I see up at the top of my screen, under the My Projects directory. And we see that the DOS command line is going to wrap around to the next line for us as we continue typing our command. And the name of the folder we want to put in our bag is gov underscore easily underscore executive underscore orders. So before we hit the enter key here, let's review the command real quickly. So we have the bag command followed by the create option, followed by the name of the bag that we want to create, which is going to be created out on the G drive, followed by the files or folders I want to put in my bag. And in this case, I'm only going to put one folder in my bag, the Governor Easley Executive Orders folder, which is out on my H drive in my, pro my projects folder. So when I hit my enter key here, Bag it will go out and create the bag, and we should see the bag appear in our lower right hand window as the bag gets created. And as you see in the lower right hand window, here is my, my easily underscore executive orders bag. Let's navigate one more time down into our Governor Easley Executive Orders folder so we can just review the folder structure of the folders and files that we wanted to put in our bag. So we saw that there were subdirectories for the executive orders for each year, followed by the contents of those folders with the executive order files in them. So let's go down now and take a look and inspect our bag. So we see that we have the My Easily Exec Orders Bag folder that was created. And as I mentioned, it looks just like any other folder. And since we have this underscore bag suffix on the end of it, it tells us that this is a bag folder. So I'm going to double click down into that and I'm now looking at the top of my bag. When we navigate into the executive orders bag folder we see that we have a data folder which is going to store all of the data that we want to transfer, all the files that we want to transfer. We also have several information related files that are going to store the metadata or the information about the bag. We have the bag info.txt file and if you double click on this, these are just simple text files. It will open them up in Notepad. This gives us the size of the bag. And the other interesting piece of information that's in this file, which isn't as intuitively obvious, is it also tells us how many files were put into the bag. So in this case, there were 80 files that were placed in this bag. So this is a good little report summary of the bag contents, both the size of the bag, from a disk space utilization perspective and the number of files in the bag. 
the bagot.txt file is just going to tell us what version of bagot is being used and the encoding mechanism. You won't need to use these as much, but good to know that they're there. The manifest-md5.txt file is actually a very important file for the Bagot program. As we mentioned, Bagot's key value is that it's going to be able to validate that all of the files that are transferred are consistent with the files that were, were sent. And how it does this is by creating an inventory of all of the files that are contained in the bag. So you see as we scan down the right the names of all of the files that are in this bag. And it gives us the path name to them as well, so whether they're under the 2006 folder, the 2005 folder, the 2008 folder. So this is our bag inventory. What we see over on the left side is a checksum. And this is that computer calculated value that scans the contents of the file and computes a value based on the contents of the file. And what happens when we send the file over to the destination system is that Bagot will rerun or recompute this checksum value. And how it knows that the file has not been changed in transit is that the checksum value that is computed on the destination side will equate the checksum value that was computed on the sender side. So every single item that is in our manifest, every single item that is in our file inventory, will have a checksum associated with it. So this is a very important file. The final file that we have out here is used to validate that the information files are transferred unchanged. So we have an inventory of each of the information files and once again this manifest-md5.txt file is very important and we have the checksum for this so that as the information files are transferred we guarantee that those also arrive reliably and intact. So that's basically the information structure and gives you a little bit of insight into how Bagot does its work. The bag-info.txt file provides a summary of the size of the bag, including the number of files in the bag, and the bag's disk utilization. And the manifest-md5 and tag manifest files hold the inventory listing for all of the files in the bag and each file's corresponding checksum that Bagot refers to when the verify valid option is run to validate that the checksums are unchanged as the files are transferred. Now let's look down into the data folder. The data folder is sometimes referred to as the payload because this is where the files and folders that you have put into your bag will be stored. And what's interesting is as we go down into the data folder we see the Governor Easley Executive Orders just as we saw in our origination folder. So let's click on the Governor Easley Executive Orders in our H drive and double click on Governor Easley Executive Orders on our G drive in our bag and we see that the complete file structure is replicated within the bag. This is one of the things that makes it easy to extract files from the bag because from a utility perspective the bag is simply a Windows folder. Now that we've taken a brief look at the bag and how it's structured, let's go out and run our verify valid option to validate that the bag's contents are valid. So I'm going to return to my command window and I'm going to issue my bag command again, but in this case I'm going to issue the verify valid option. And the parameter that verify valid option takes is the name of the bag that we want it to verify. So this is going to be our g colon backslash bagot underscore bags. And the name of the bag is my underscore easily underscore exec underscore orders underscore bag. And now when I hit the enter key, the bag at utility is going to go through and compute checksums for all of the files that are in that data folder and it's going to verify that those checksums match the checksums that were in our MD5 text file. So I hit my enter key and do you see that that ran relatively quickly because this is a very small bag but the key thing to note here is our result is true result. So this denotes that the bag was successfully validated and that the contents of the bag are now consistent with the files that were put into the bag.